I'm Micah Smith, and this is Automation Anywhere Quick Tips. In this quick tip, we're going to take a look at using the Credential Vault and how we can use that to securely store and retrieve values for our bot. So I'm going to talk about a, a very common scenario here, right? And this is this is really part of maturing from really basic bot de development into like more intermediate bot development. But I've got a login page, right? Pretty simple page. It's got an email address, it's got a password, and it's got a sign in button, right? And I've created a bot that works with that, right? So here it's going through, it's filling in the email. We can see here that I've got the user keystrokes occurring. Same thing with the password. It's okay to show you guys the password. This is just a dummy site. Uh, the password is show me the money and it's got two dollar signs, right? It's a banking app, so I thought that was clever. Uh, and then it's got the, the button to click, right? So this works as is, but as you can see, We've got some hard-coded credentials here. I've got a hard-coded password. I have a hard-coded uh, username, which is my email, and that can represent a security risk with my bot. So let's talk about how we can solve for that and how we can secure this bot up. I've got one slide I wanna go through real quick and then we'll jump back into fixing this. So first off, what is the Credential Vault? It's a centralized vault for securely storing values which can be provisioned to my bots. So there's kind of two parts there. First. Yes, I can securely store them in the Automation Anywhere control room, and that allows me to also retrieve them and provision them for my bots. So that means that not every bot has access to every single credential, and that's really important, right? My credential should be on a you know need-to-know basis where not every bot has access to every credential, but the bot has access to the specific credential or credentials that it needs. It allows me to securely store my sensitive values. So those sensitive values and that sensitive data is stored using uh, an encryption algorithm in the Automation Anywhere control room in that credential vault. Those are all kind of obvious things, right? A credential vault should allow me to securely store things. What I think really, uh, you know, kind of separates this from being useful to super, super helpful is this enables my bots to be environment agnostic. What I mean by that is typically when we're doing software development, right? We might go from a dev environment to a test environment and then finally to a prod environment, right? Each of the sites that I might be working against for those different environments might have a different credential. It might have a different URL. It might have a different password, right? If my bot is always just referencing a credential in the credential vault, then it's easy for me to go from environment to environment without having to make any changes to my bot itself. I would just have to make sure that that same credential in the same locker and in the same credential name exists in each of those environments and allows my bot to not have any of those values hard coded, which makes my bot much more dynamic. When I move from environment to environment, I don't necessarily have to worry about that particular part breaking. It also can be used for more than just credentials. So as I just alluded to, if I've got a different URL that I'm using for my dev environment versus test versus production to you know hit some internal website, I could store that in the credential vault. So it doesn't have to be only credentials. I could store extra stuff there if I needed to. I've even seen some organizations, and I've done this myself, where you might store a DOM X path in the credential vault, right? Hey, this one DOM X path that changes sometimes, I want to have access to be able to update it without actually updating my bot. That's a way to use it. So I want to talk about the credential vault here and, and what it's really made up of, and then we'll create a credential and, and we'll show how to use it. So when we look at the credential vault, it's made up of lockers and the locker is really like the, the base level container right here. I've got it represented as a folder, but it's really the highest level container for my credentials inside of my locker. I can have one or more credentials. And those credentials might be related to a specific site. I've got a credential for Salesforce. I've got a credential for ServiceNow. I can store those in different credentials. Now, why would you have this two levels of like locker versus credential? Well, think of a locker as like something that you might use departmentally, right? I've got an HR locker. And then inside of that, I have HR credentials. And no one has to have access to even the HR locker, except for the people who are dealing with the HR bots. Right, So that way I can provision and separate out these different credentials and this access based on the you know, kind of hierarchy structure there. At the lowest level, I have the attributes. 
And for each credential, I can have one or many attributes. And those attributes are really the values that I'm gonna be trying to use within my bot. So for the example we're gonna look at here in a second, I'm gonna have an attribute for the email address. I'll have an attribute for the password. I could have an attribute for the URL, right? And I can then pull those attributes back when I'm actually uh, running my bot and building my bot. So let's, let's see how this works in action. So I'm gonna flip over to my lockers real quick. So I'm looking at my lockers. And again, this is, uh, I'm using Automation Anywhere Enterprise A2019. Uh, the process is really similar if you're doing this in Community Edition. So you'll still be able to follow along with me. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a locker. You can see I have one that I previously created. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is create a new locker. And I'm gonna call this one the Quick Tips Locker. Okay, now, here I could add a credential to it, but uh, I don't actually have a credential that I want to add to this locker yet. So I'm gonna leave it empty for the time being. Notice that the owner is set as me, this is my username. So this is how I'm authenticating um, and I am by default the owner of this. If I needed to add additional users who are owners, I could do so. Same with managers and participants, uh, I can separate that out. Um, the participants will be able to view the locker, but they won't be able to add new credentials and things like that. So um, the part that we're worried about just for this demo here is consumer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a consumer, which is a grouping, a role that includes my bot runners, okay? So I'm adding my bot runners to this. And that way when the bot actually executes, it can consume the values that are a part of this locker. So Anyone that is in you know, custom bot runner or custom CR audit logs roles, um, those users would not be able to consume this locker unless they were also a part of Micah's runner's role. So just to clarify that. If you're on community edition, you don't have to really worry about this because you don't have to worry about roles, but just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I've got my locker created, but right now my locker is empty. So I'm gonna go back to the My Credentials tab and I'm gonna create a credential. So I'll hit Create Credential. And again, this is where I'd wanna give my credential a name. And I, you know, kind of my advice would be that create a credential per application or per use. So you don't have a ton of stuff in that one credential. Um, and if you need to, you know, for some reason, remove it, it's not gonna break every single bot that you have. So uh, I, would, I would do this by application. So I'm gonna call this Eagle One Financial. Uh, I'm gonna add it to the Quick Tips Locker. Okay, so that means it's gonna land inside of that locker. And I'm gonna give two attributes. My first is just gonna be my username. Here I can choose whether it's a standard input or a user provided input. If I do a user provided input, that allows for someone that I've assigned to a consumer or to a participant on this particular um, credential, they could add that value, right? So let's say that I developed a bot for HR. They said, hey Micah, you did a great job with this bot. We trust you, but not quite enough for our passwords, right? That's fine. So what I would do is I would create that attribute as a user provided value, and then I would have them as consumers of that particular attribute, and they could come in and fill that in. So as a bot builder, I never actually had to type it in. I don't have to know what that password is, but they were able to provide that for me, and my bot can still reference it and still pull that value when it needs to do its login. All right, so I'm gonna leave that one as standard actually. And because I'm just going to fill it in now, and I'm going to put user at eagle1financial.com. Perfect. We'll add one more credential uh, attribute, and I'm going to call this one password. Again, I'm going to leave this as standard because I'm just going to fill it in right now. And I'm going to mark this one as masked, right? This is a password, so it's a sensitive one. So I'm going to fill it in, right? Obviously, we'll see here in, in a second. Hold on. All right. Oh, where did that go? Okay, so we can obviously see the difference between masked and non-masked. I wouldn't be able to update this credential. So if my password changed and I just added a one at the end, I would have to retype the whole thing here. I couldn't just modify it. With a standard credential, I do have the ability to modify it. However, this is you know available for being read in plain text if someone else was a consumer here and came to see it. So just to call out those differences, if it is a password, I would strongly encourage you to save it as masked. If it's not a password or not something that's ultra sensitive, uh, you could leave it as you know kind of a, a, a non-masked value. So at least you can see what it is and update it if you need to. 
All right, so I'm gonna create that credential. Perfect. So that's been created. It's been added to my Quick Tips Locker. Let's go back now to my bot, right? So the first step of my bot is to enter that email address. Here we can see it was just a keystroke entry before. I'm gonna click on the select credential here and hit pick. The Quick Tips Locker shows up. My Eagle One Financial Credential shows up. And then I wanna select my username, which is my attribute. We'll do the same thing for my password. Again, my password has previously shown me the dollar sign. So I'm gonna go and select a credential, uh, which would be my Quick Tips Locker, Eagle One Financial, and Password. So I wanted to call out the language on that PowerPoint slide just because it does get a little bit confusing, right? We see that same hierarchy, right? I've got a locker, the locker has one or more credentials, and then that credential has one or more attributes. The language kind of gets backwards here because it says pick a credential. When in reality, I'm picking an attribute of a credential. I'm not picking a credential. So I, that's why I wanted to kind of call that out, just to call out those two differences. If you're working with the Control Room API, you'll also want to make sure you pay close attention to that. Um, because especially when you're trying to retrieve or update a value, you will have to know the difference between a credential and an attribute because those will have different IDs. All right, not to get too far off topic. Let's hit save here. I'm going to run this. Let's make sure that window is open someplace. Yeah. And we'll just test to make sure that it works. Uh, I guess I didn't show you that it worked before, but uh, trust me that it did work. I will say that um, if you think about the process that's actually happening now when the bot runs, uh, you know, before it was just filling in the text to that field and then moving on. Uh, now, technically what's happening is it has to make a call back to the control room to fetch that value and then fill it in. So, you know, if I had run it before, we might see that it was like, hey, if you blink, you miss it. Now it takes just a hair longer uh, when it's pulling the credential. I don't think it impacts anything negatively, but wanted to point that out. It is just slightly slower, but again, the reason being is because it has to make a call back to the control room to fetch that value, pull that value back, and then insert it into the field. So anyway. I'm Micah Smith. This has been Automation Anywhere Quick Tips. Be sure to like and subscribe for more of this content. Go be great.